My name is Steve. Welcome back to my shop. In this video, I'm going to be getting kind of back to my roots, if you will, and doing a little modeling project. That's kind of my passion, but most of what I do in the shop is more tool making and, and larger projects. But this time I have a chance to work on a model. I belong to a museum group. It is called the InfoAge Science and History Museums. And it's made up of a group of about 10 museums. And we are located on the site of a former military base that was an annex to Fort Monmouth. And it's called Camp Evans. It was turned over to the town when the army was finished with it. But it's a very historic site in that much of the radar was developed here, including the first time that radar was bounced off the moon. They were able to measure the distance to the moon very accurately. And one of the other systems that was developed at our site was a radar system and an antenna array that was used on Little Boy. Now we're going back in history to World War II. And we're in the process of setting up some World War II 75th anniversary events coming up this summer. And Little Boy was the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And we actually have a bomb looking casing very similar in construction to uh, that bomb. It didn't look any different than most of all the other ordnance that was dropped all over Europe and Japan. And it's about 40% the size of the original bomb. And one of the unique things about it was that it had a special antenna on it. And it was designed and programmed so that it would detonate at 2,000 feet above the ground. So... I have been tasked to make a replica of the antenna for that bomb. So let's get started. Here is a copy of the 40% silhouette of what the antenna looked like. And it's a very simple little project. And the base is four inches long. So I started out with a piece of brass four inches wide. And I took it over to the museum because one of our groups over there has a, a roller. And I was able to roll it through. And the bomb carcass that we have is eight inches in diameter. So I cut out out of cardboard an 8 inch radius and I rolled the piece to approximate that 8 inch radius. I'm going to have to do a little bit of tweaking on it. And then what I'm going to do is drill holes in it and use this brass rod for the antennas and I will silver solder it together. So over to the bandsaw. I'm going to make the base one inch wide. So I took a square and I marked it off. I'm going to stay to the outside of the line and then I'll take a file and clean off the edges. Thank you. 
that was rough. I'm going to put it in the vise and just take a file and clean up the edges. Here's my setup in the vise. I just used a piece of round stock so that I wouldn't knock, squeeze the radius out of the piece. And now I've got a nice sharp file. I'm going to do some little draw filing to, to get this nice and straight down to my original line. There we go. Now I got it nice and flat all the way across. Okay, I'm going to take it out to burr it and flip it over to do the other side. Just cut the first antenna and that will fit. Now I'm going to make this U-shaped antenna and I measured and the inside diameter is 3 8 So I just grabbed a 3 8 bolt out of my bin and I'm going to use that to bend this rod around and then I'll cut it to length. 
It should, it's pretty soft stuff. I should be able to bend it right around there. I just did a little bit of massaging of the material there and looks like I've got it pretty good. I've got a pair of non-marring pliers here. They don't have any grip jaws in them. They're smooth jaws and I've used them to squeeze it up without damaging the material. That's all it took. Just a little. You know, just cut it to length and try it in the base. Okay, that's two. I just cut off my last piece. How about that? <laughs> the cut off from this is the perfect length. All I got to do is square up the ends. Okay, let me get it all cleaned up and ready to solder. Okay, I'm going to be using the uh, number 45 silver solder and the white soldering flux. I've cleaned up the parts with a scotch Bright and some acetone. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on each one. going to come through the bottom just a little bit so I'll take and uh, let them go through so I get a good solid bond with the solder and then I'll take and file them off underneath after after the fact stuff has dried out pretty bad. You can take and add a little bit of water to it to uh, to fix it up but since I need so little of it I'm just gonna let it go. Got the parts set up on a heat proof base. I'm just gonna use my little map gas torch there's not that much heat required. It doesn't warrant getting the oxyacetylene out for it.
And that's it. That's all it takes. I'll give you a close up of what the solder did. Let's try and bring it in a little bit. And it just flowed in around. The key is to heat the base and the, what you want to solder and not the solder itself. And you just touch it and wherever you had flux it's going to flow. So now I'll clean it up and I'll let it cool off a little bit. It's still a little bit warm. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to align all the pins and it'll be all ready for paint. Now the antenna array is completed. I think it matches the uh, the drawing pretty well. And now I'll turn it over to the crew that's building the rest of the model.